couple of mods is made an update on the wrist fusion and that's what I feel I need to do tonight my surgery was 31st of March 2017 and we're now oh I can't even remember the date Tuesday 6th of February 2018 so it's we're getting on for 11 months you've probably watched the um, videos I've already made I did day one day two day three day ten and then seven weeks little video on about how I was doing my physio and I was spending time out in my Polaris there she is and then I did another update back in June 2017 couple of days before I went back to work and everything seemed okay I saw the surgeon middle of August explained to him this part of the hand was very very tender and he put me into a splint for another six weeks but I coped with that I went to work every day I lived with the splint, I was managing to do everything I needed to do and then I went to see him again end of October, early November and I was still suffering with it being very tender in this area I don't know if you can see it's very swollen in this area, it's very very tender there Just another procedure he did after doing the fusion because there was so much damage in this side of the wrist he took the end of the ulna off so the ulna bone is not even connected to the wrist and there's already a plate on the ulna uh, what it turns out is it's happening is it's trapping nerves over the summer months it wasn't really other than the weird sensations and I was getting in my hand, pins and needles and that and the lack of feeling and in my little finger and that finger it wasn't really giving me an awful lot of grief but then as the winter drew on and the weather got damper it began to really really pain me um, I could walk out the house in the morning Cut to nine. I start work at nine o'clock, so I'd leave the house. And the moment I walked outside, if it was a damp morning, I could feel it on the hand. Instantly feel the temperature on the hand. It was so it's totally hyper temperature sensitive. And because I work in a temperature controlled environment because of what we do and the materials we work with they have to be machined at a certain temperature for the accuracy and the just really to keep the tolerances because when the jobs are built and when they're used by my customer they use them in a temperature controlled environment so we have to make them in that environment so we have to keep the workshop at a certain temperature we can't let it get above 10 degrees Celsius, so everything's cold. It's great in the summer, no problems in the summer. Brilliant buildings are working, but come the winter, it's really hard to control the temperature. And there's, there's days where I'm just creased up in pain. And the lad I work with, I'll say to him some days, says, just feel my hand. And he'll feel my little finger, and it's, it's freezing, it's stone cold. And right across the top of my hand here, freezing, freezing cold. And then you go to the thumb and the other two fingers and the other side of my arm. And it's a normal temperature. It's that temperature difference across the hand that's giving me a lot of grief. Like I say, it's very temperature hypersensitive. I have spoken to the surgeon and I've asked him to remove the plate out of the ulna and do something about the bone moving because it's catching nerves and that's what's causing all the problems 
I've got no regrets about having the wrist fused because I've got lots and lots of strength in that hand. I can use it, have my restrictions, holding a pen and writing, I can do, but I don't do a lot of writing and I find it quite painful at the moment because of all the pain in this side of my hand. Um, chopsticks aren't a problem, I can eat with my chopsticks, I've got no grief with that. But if I'm out in the cold working, I'm outside doing something, say I'm working on the tractor or we've got a little front hoe in work, so if I'm working on that, I get very cold. If I'm out in the Polaris and I haven't got my thermal gloves on, it gets very cold. If I'm using the cameras when I'm out and I'm doing a YouTube blog, it gets cold. If I'm out working of an evening, it gets cold. Then the problem is warming it up. It can take a good three or four hours to slowly warm it back up to a room temperature. Because if I warm it up too fast, it's painful. So I have to let it gradually come back up to temperature. Once it's up to temperature, I get my head down. So... It could be two, three o'clock in the morning before I've actually got it to a point where I can sleep, where it's not too painful. But if I roll over and I lie on it, or somebody lies on it, or somebody catches it, knocks it, or I do something stupid like one of the kids will jump off the sofa, certainly the little one, she's only five, if she jumps at me and she wants me to catch her, that can cause me a lot of grief. But you can't tell a five-year-old not to do it. It's part of what five-year-olds do. They see you, they're excited, they want to cuddle, they want to hug. They're, they're going to do it, but I can't blame her. That's something she does. I know, I've got no regrets about having the wrist fusion. Um, I've put all the videos together now. Instead of them being individuals, you've got, coming up after this, you've got Day one, two, day three, day ten. Then you've got a bit of the physio, like I say. Then you've got the update video before I went to work. So if you're willing to sit here and watch my wrist fusion documentary, blog, whatever you want to call it, listen to it. got some advice in there for people who are considering the um, fusion please message me if you've got any questions regarding having your wrist fused um, not everybody's going to have my problem it's just I've been unfortunate and there was a lot of damage in my wrist so it's probably to be expected please ask me message me Ask me how I feel about things. And I'm really happy to answer your questions. Anyway, go and enjoy the rest of the video. It's coming up after this intro. Thank you. Two P Productions presents Adventure Pilates.